Now that we have all the load, uh, the changes loaded into the ECU, let's go ahead and bring it online. Make sure everything took. And let's see if it starts. All right, first try, that's pretty good. We will let the wide bands come up. Okay, that's not too bad for just using a VE table generator, um, using some predefined values. Uh, the engine is still relatively cold here. It's uh, 95 degrees, uh, cold start went well. Now you can see that we are fairly rich here, but our warm-up enrichment, we see this enrichment value here, is not really very high. Let's take a look. Yeah, warm-up enrichment is only adding about 10% fuel. So let's take a look and see what the VE table is doing. Uh, VE table says we are we have a value of around you know uh, 54, 57. Now what this may mean is that when I generated the VE table, I put in a, an idle KPA value of around 45. I may have been a little bit off target there. Uh, our KPA value here is 50, 55. So what I'm going to do is set these to uh, value of 45, pull fuel out of it, and we'll see how this affects the idle. When we're doing this testing and we're just moving the value around to, you know, try and get it to clean up. Sometimes it's best to just go ahead and use a big block of fuel around idle when you're basically guessing as to what the air fuel ratio should be. And this is, this is what I found to be the fastest way to get this done. Oh, see, that's way too far. Okay. Well, we're going to let this warm up. And uh, when it's fully warm, we're going to go ahead and start doing some uh, steady state pulls on the dyno here. All right, now that the engine's nice and warm, let's go ahead and get started. Nice startup. Now, I don't know if you could see in the top right corner there where the uh, after start enrichment, um, we had an after start enrichment event and then it, it ended up, you know, decaying off very, very rapidly. Now when the wideband comes up, we'll be able to see what our air fuel ratio is. Now before I shut the vehicle off and started this portion of the video, we were idling at a really nice, you know, 14-4 air fuel ratio. And you can see here where our ego correction is now applying 105% correction factor. So what that tells me is what we need to do is go in and increase our after start enrichment. So we'll go to ASE and we can see we're adding about 28%. Now, instead of increasing my after start enrichment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the after start enrichment taper. The point of this is to keep the after start enrichment fuel around for a longer period of time. This is very helpful on a hot start situation where the vehicle's maybe been sitting for a moment. Um, a lot of people call this heat soak. Uh, really, it, this generally is not going to be a heat soak situation. What this is is, is that uh, the engine just needs more fuel uh, for an extended period of time on startup to rebuild the boundary layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toss in a value like 450. I'm gonna blend this back. 
shut the vehicle off. We're going to wait just a moment and do a restart. Now, what we should notice on that restart is that the engine should run cleaner if we got that after start enrichment correct. Notice how on that restart, we're not as lean as we were previously. However, up here in our enrichment, notice how it's already decayed away before the wideband even comes up and we're adding that fuel again. I'm going to increase it further. I'm going to double it again. Blend this back. Let's do this test one more time. Shut the vehicle down. We can't shut it down and do an immediate restart. If we shut it down and do an immediate restart, we're not letting the fuel vaporize off the hot intake manifold. I highly suggest doing this with the engine fully hot. That means you've been sitting and running for uh, an extended period of time. If you're going to do this testing um, and you have a, a hard time after an extended restart where the car's been sitting for an extended period of time, you may actually need to increase your priming pulse instead, um, like a Miata will sometimes boil the fuel in the fuel rail uh, when it's shut off and it's been sitting with the hood closed after a, like a hard track event. Um, any of your, your non-return style systems, generally that might be an issue. Your return style systems don't really have that problem um, unless your return is in the back of the vehicle. Now, notice how the enrichment is much slower to tick away this time. Our wideband is back up. Notice how the enrichment is still sticking around. We are richer than we were before. The enrichment completely disappears. And notice how we're still lean, but we were not lean on the immediate restart. What this means is that I simply need to go into the fuel table and I need to add more fuel. Now that I've added more fuel, we have a nice stable air fuel ratio around 14, which is right around our target, and ego correction is barely doing any work. We'll burn that. And let's do one more restart test. When I'm working through after start enrichment, generally I like to do it in small bites. I make a change, see how that change affects the engine, rinse and repeat. All right, I think we've got it this time. So startup was nice and clean. After start enrichment stuck around for a decent amount of time. When the wide bands came up, uh, we were reading around a 14-3 air fuel ratio, uh, which is right on target. And our ego correction is barely doing any work. We'll call that a success. All right, let's go ahead and jump into some steady state tuning on this and see how quickly we can get the fuel table knocked out. 